G'day. Aquaponics, it's awesome, especially when you're looking at a small little system that you can put almost anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I built my little barrel system. It's just a brand new little system that I built so I can show people a few differences and how to do a few different little things and different options on how to do it. And, and yeah, I've got my bigger system over here that works really, really well. So I want to be able to show you some options and show you how to do it and show you how easy it can be. I've used a jigsaw, a drill, and a handsaw, as in like a hacksaw. And that's all the tools that I've actually needed. So, and I was able to do it all by my lonesome. So anyone can do it. You do need to know how to use those tools, but if you know how to use them, anyone can build this. So, I'll show you and I'll run you through how I built my little barrel aquaponics system. Okay, so, we're going to be using the drill with a hole saw on it. It's a small one and a jigsaw. So when you're using power tools, safety glasses. You've got to make sure you're protecting yourself. And take off all jewellery, make sure nothing can actually get caught. And if you're like me, well, I used to have long hair, so pulling it all back and off. To start with, I'm going to drill some corner holes with my hole saw. And I've got, this is the, the hole that's going to be for the area for the fish to be able to see, do everything we want. And on this side, I'm actually going to have a viewing hole, a viewing section. And I'll be putting some perspex on and having that nice and pretty. And while we've got all the power tools out, we're also going to be cutting up this drum into making into a grow bed. So if you remember I said we can cut it straight down the middle that way, or that way, and have that as one grow bed on either side, or we can cut it in these two sections here, so top and bottom. This is what I've chosen to do for how I want my setup to be. So now I'm going to get to it. So we've cut up the fish tank part, now we're doing my grow bed, so this is one grow bed, this is the second one, 30 centimetres deep, again I'm just drilling the holes so that I can start off my jigsaw, and uh, safety goggles, eh? So, this is one of the grow beds that we're going to be doing and I'll be setting up both two, two of them. One is flood and drain and one is a constant flow. But I wanted to show you, I mentioned before that you can lose the structural integrity of the barrels once you cut them. And if I had have cut this long ways, so cutting the top off right off, that would actually start to buckle out. There is enough structural integrity in this size, so it's not going to move too much. But it can, if you know, if you cut it the other way. The other thing, we've just gone through and cut it with the jigsaw, and you'll see we've got all of these edgings. So we want to make sure that we get that cleaned up. Now, personally, I'm a bit of a cheap, cheap skate, so I just use the knife. You can buy a deburring tool. It really depends on how much work you're going to do and how comfortable you are with a knife. Sharp object, please be careful. But um, it is, seriously, it is taking, be very careful, finding your way of doing it and cutting off. You just wanted to make sure that you got rid of all sharp edges and all of this little crappy stuff. You can start to see how that we've now got lovely blue on here. We do not want any of that in our grow bed or our fish tank. So that's what we want to do. We want to go and get that off on my grow bed. And this is the fish tank that we've cut up. So I want to make sure I meet all of these edges up here too. I want to make sure it's nice, easy, clean and safe. Okay, so that is my next step. Alrighty, so we're looking at some of the plumbing and piping that can go into your grow bed. And I've got three different parts here. I'm trying to find the right balance. 
we've got the the guard for the grow bed here we've got the standpipe plumbing here and if you're wanting a bell siphon then we have the bell here so let's have a look at the three different parts for your bell siphon why do we have a guard the guard stops the gravel from going from the grow bed into your plumbing and okay, into the rest of the system so we've got a cap that we pop on the bottom of it you can see it's got the whole pre drilled to fit the standpipe plumbing so for me in this case it was a 25 mil plumbing part that I'm using with a 20 mil piping so I've been able to get the right hole for that um, drill the right hole for me for that one into the 90 mil now the reason why we have the cap that we place on there is that it keeps it helps us to keep everything in place and not falling out so we screw in hard to see We've got the holes already marked out and done in so we, when we screw that in and that will then be sitting in our grow bed that will mean screwed in means no one can accidentally lift up our guard and let all of the gravel out so that's why we screw it in. I used to bolt it in, but have seen a, a way. It was uh, Rob Gray, one of his YouTubes where I saw he, he screwed it in. I thought that was so much better. So away with the bolts and in with the screws. And these are marine grade screws that I'm using. And this plumbing ends up going on the inside of the guard. And that comes through the bottom here. So we have our O-rings. And so that then moves us on to the next part. We have an O-ring on this side and then we have the grow bed and then we have the piping underneath so if you're imagining moving on to the standpipe part now we have an o-ring on this side and you literally have whoops this part goes in here it's gonna be so much easier to show you on the grow bed but basically that comes into here a ring on the other side through the grow bed and then attaching to that piping there the standpipe will vary depending on um, the size of your grow bed the height of your grow bed so you then you measure up the piping that you want you want to make sure that you've got at least five centimeters from the top that you've got the dry gravel dry media so you don't get algae and other problems happening this is just a bend if you're having the bell siphon you do want to make sure you've got a bend elbow there just to make sure you get the water lock happening and you don't get any air locks and this is the bell siphon this is the bell that we use you can see that it's been cut in three different sections there and we've just got the lid on top now this is a 65 mil it is pressure pipe and what will happen is that will go on top of the standpipe so the standpipe goes inside here inside there and that fits into the yep, plumbing on this side and we'll be able to see it so much clearer when I'm actually putting it together and showing you but at the moment I'm just whoopsie showing you the different parts and pieces that don't want to sit together in this wind so yeah, it's pretty cool but we do want you to need to make sure that you get the right heights for your grow bed so I'll show you how I've measured that up in the next one Alrighty, so when we don't have the bell, so we're not doing a bell siphon, we're just doing a constant flow system. It depends on how you wanted to set it up, but one of the options are to still have your guard here. So we've got the, this is my 90 mil, and I've just drilled the holes in there to let water flow through the bottom, and it will fill up to the point of the standpipe and the cap. In screwing, trying to get it to sit, in screwing the cap into the pipe, it just gives you that extra bit of protection to make sure that nobody can lift the guard out. We use the guard to stop all the gravel from getting into the into the piping, all the gravel from the grow bed. We don't want that in the piping. So this is a good way of being able to keep it out with that guard. And as you'll see, so this is the whole, this is a, just an upside down one of the barrel um, grow beds I'm doing. What I would do is I would have the O-ring here, put that on top, then moving on to the standpipe plumbing that would then go in there and then a standpipe on top and this up here is the level in which the amount of water would be going into that grow bed this one so you've got the male and the female fitting the male goes underneath 
so it would actually be turned up the other way around at the moment because it's upside down but we're just pretending at the moment so that would go underneath the grow bed and screw that in really tightly and this is some of the plumbing that you can use coming out it depends on the size of the grow bed it depends on the type of plumbing you want to use there are many variants but making sure that you've got a guard in place some type of guard to stop the gravel from going into the rest of the system using things like your o-rings is a really good idea to make sure that you don't have leaks anywhere and um, yeah screwing things in here is also another really good idea to make sure that people don't accidentally go hey how does this work pick it up and pull it all out and ruin your plumbing and your piping and your system so that's the plumbing if you're not wanting to use the bell siphon.